Steps family, today I have another recipe for you. It's my vegan instant pot split pea soup. And this recipe is absolutely flavorful. It is so filling, but so delicious as well. And guess what? It's oil free, full of fiber, full of nutrients, and it's good for you. As vegans, we are always wondering, you know, how am I getting my protein? But I gotta say that, to be honest, you don't have to worry about protein around here because this instance pot, split pea soup, has enough protein because peas, if you're not familiar, legumes, beans, peas, they are high in protein. And you wanna eat a lot of split peas because split peas is just so good for you. Nourishment wise, it is up there in one of the top beans, legumes that you should eat. So you wanna try because not only that, it tastes good, it tastes absolutely good. And this recipe, what I like about this recipe is the fact that the flavor profile of it, there's a smoky flavor that will be going on because I use smoked paprika. Um, you're gonna get your nice flavors of the herbs that I'm using today, my basil, thyme, bay leaf, amazing flavors that are going on in this soup. And as we approach the fall and winter time when it's starting to get cool, you wanna get some of this nourishing soup that doesn't have meat, but tastes so good that you can serve it to all those people who are picky eaters, who are like, ooh, I can't eat my food without meat. They won't, you won't miss the meat with this. This is one of my absolutely number one recipes when it comes on to soup. It is loved by all my readers over on my website, Health Your Steps. So you wanna go over there for the full recipe and you wanna make sure that you subscribe to my channel and become part of the Healthier Steps family. And also hit on the notification bell below so that you can be updated on all my new recipes. You'll be getting new recipes on a weekly basis. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm just chopping up my potatoes. And what I do, like if my potato is organic, I leave the skin on because guess what? The skin has a lot of nutrients in it. So I usually just purchase organic potatoes and then leave the skin. Um, I like the red skin potatoes. I mostly buy that or Yukon Gold. I like Yukon Gold as well. So buttery, so creamy. And But if I don't have Yukon Gold potatoes, I'm definitely getting the red ones. I rarely, rarely buy russet because somehow they always have this whole like a bug or a worm as eaten into it. <laughs> There's something about russets. <laughs> when you buy them organic, they're just something about them. Okay, next I'm going to chop up my celery and I just love the flavor of celery. It adds extra sodium to your dish and it has a nice flavor in any soup that you're making. So, it's just delicious. So my instant pot split pea soup is a winner. I mean, this recipe is well loved on my website. It is so popular. You've got to try it. <laughs> so this recipe is so easy to make. You know why I like it? Because I'm not using any oil, so there's no sauteing of your veggies. I'm pretty much just dumping everything in my instant pot. Then I'm going to Pressure it at high speed for about 10 minutes. Easy peasy, that's it. Okay, so what we have here for this split pea soup, of course I'm using green split peas, but you can use any split peas. You can use um, yellow split peas, green split peas. You could use brown lentils. You could use any of those soft cooking beans because in no time they cook so fast. So you can add any of these lentils or split peas, okay? Also, there's celery, potato, carrots, 
green onions or scallions, um, garlic, bay leaf, nutritional yeast flakes, and here I have thyme, basil, and smoked paprika. And also, I have, this is my vegetable broth, and I'm gonna add scotch bonnet pepper. You don't have to add this. Pretty much, I'm just putting everything in the instant pot. So I'm adding my carrots, potatoes next. And this is such a great soup um, for feeding a whole family. So it's one of those, everyone is gonna come back for seconds and thirds. <laughs> it doesn't stay long. This one, soup doesn't last long in my home. I'm use, adding the green onions and garlic. This one does not last long in my home. But what I like about this soup too is that it freezes well. It freezes very well. So I'm gonna add my green split peas and I wash them. You have to make sure you wash them. Let's get all. Okay. And I'm adding the spices, the herbs, the spices. Some pepper and bay leaves and I'm adding just gonna give it a stir and then I'm adding nutritional yeast flakes and this just adds flavor and B12 it's fortified with B12 to your soup looks so good looks amazing and next I'm going to just put the lid on so I'm gonna hit the manual mode and I'm gonna let it cook for about 10 minutes so that'll be good and you have to make sure that it's unsealing when it's like that means it's open this is sealed and it will come to pressure and it will cook for 10 minutes then I'm gonna allow it to cool naturally for another 20 minutes and then you're then i open the lid but see you soon all right soup is ready and it has depressurized um you let it sit for 20 minutes and now we're gonna open and it smells good in here oh oh wow <laughs> oh it looks so good and it's perfect look at that perfect and smells amazing and you can adjust the seasoning if you want if you want more salt you add more salt it's all up to you but i can't wait to dive in <laughs> i just want to dive in right now so i'm going to share me a bowl of split pea soup look at that <laughs> look at that oh perfect texture Oh, this is so comfy. I mean, in the evenings, nothing like a warm bowl of soup. Soda satisfying. And I can't wait because I know it's absolutely delicious. You've got to try it. You really do. I'm telling you. <laughs> it is so good. So flavorful. Mmm. Mmm. And this was cooked to perfection in 10 minutes. Only 10 minutes. Guys, this soup was so easy. You saw it was just a dump and cooked soup. And while I was cooking it, I said, you know what? I really need to do another soup for you guys. You deserve it. So I'm going to share with you my pigeon pea soup gandules, gungu peas, whatever you call it. And it's a Jamaican favorite of ours, but this time it's meatless. So let's go. So today I'm using green pigeon peas. The reason I'm using it, it cooks much faster and it's actually, I'm using frozen 
um gungo peas i have gungo peas in my garden but they're not ready as yet i think they're ready probably in november so we have a few more months to go um the green one cooks pretty fast so once you soak it overnight then you're gonna cook it and it'll take longer to cook um, so you'll cook it probably about 40 minutes and then you'll proceed in making your soup either green or dry they both taste amazing the flavors are slightly different I believe personally the dry one has a more robust earthy flavor almost most similar to black eyed peas but in a good way <laughs> And the green peas is more mild, but just as flavorful, the green pigeon peas. So whichever you choose, it doesn't matter. This dish tastes amazing. Another thing is what I like about most of the soups that I make is they're easy to prepare because basically you're dumping them in the pot, cooking them. And then after that, you get the most flavorful, delicious soup ever. <laughs> So let's get started. I'm going to add my green pigeon peas and I'm going to add some water and I'm going to let it cook, let it cook for about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to bring it to a boil and then I'm just, once it start boiling, I'll just reduce the heat let it cook for 10 minutes and next i'm going to show you how i make my jamaican dumplings to go in a soup jamaicans as jamaicans we don't think soup is soup unless it has dumplings so i'm going to show show you how i prepare dumplings and basically it's just a dough it's flour salt water that's it so i'm going to I'll be right back. I'm going to wash my hands and I'll come back and show you. So I'm back and today I'm using gluten-free flour. I'm using the Pillsbury brand. I personally like this brand. I also like Krusty's brand, but I really like this one because this one reminds me of regular dumpling made with all-purpose flour. It has the, it's the, it's the closest I can find that's gluten-free and tastes like regular flour. So to follow this recipe, you can use regular flour. I'm just really showing you the technique. And I'm not using measurements, but you can go on my website there. My dumplings has measurements over there. So I'm just adding my flour. And I'm not gonna add up, make a lot because I'm gonna do spinners. I'm gonna do the little cylindrical ones. And I'm gonna add some salt. Not a lot, but I like to put a little salt because then I add some flavor to my dumplings. <laughs> and then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my water. So I'm just going to add enough water to bring the dough together, to let it form or stick together. Another ingredient I love to add, and I don't always add it, is some ground flax seed. So you can add that too to make sure that your dough comes together but I'm just adding enough water and then I'm gonna get in and then I'm gonna form my dumplings so I mean growing up in Jamaica dumplings were a big thing we had dumplings for breakfast lunch or di and dinner and every time I make a soup my husband's like you're gonna put dumplings in it <laughs> so <laughs> so I always put dumplings in most of my soups most of my soup would have dumplings and I'm just gonna add a little bit more and then I'm gonna get in and then show you how I form my dumplings <laughs> that's it so it's coming together and pretty much it's ready to be formed into little you can do balls or you can do little i'll show you tube cylinders i don't know what you call it and we're just gonna roll them like this and then we're gonna drop them in the soup so i'll be back 
Once this ready, I'll show you later. So either you do balls like that. You can do little balls. Or you can do um, little roll them in balls and then like that. If you want, like say, we say your dumplings to be tight or stiff, add more flour and less water. If you want them to be soft, when they cook and more chewy, add water to the point where um, it just comes off your hand easily. So this is like perfect for a soft version of dumpling. And if I really want it to be tight, tight, stiff, when you bite into it, <laughs> then I will add more flour. So see you in a minute. Okay, we're back and our pigeon peas, they're soft enough, they're ready, see? And so they're basically ready. And all I'm going to do is add the ingredients um, the rest of the ingredients to the pot, let them cook and do its thing. So I'm going to add my potatoes and I'm going to add onions, garlic, scallion. I'm going to add red pepper. To give you some color you don't have to <laughs> carrots you have trust me on this one this soup tastes absolutely delicious because when you're making vegan food you have to up the flavor you can't let it expect that you're just gonna take out meat and it's gonna taste the same you have to up certain flavor profile and so I'm adding extra like ginger, I just added ginger. Now I'm adding my um, allspice berries or pimento. I'm adding thyme, fresh thyme from the garden. You can use dried thyme, about a teaspoon. I'm adding scotch bonnet pepper. You can use cayenne pepper. And I'm just gonna stir this. <laughs> this looks so pretty. And next. I'm going to add some vegetable broth and I'm going to add some coconut milk and this is what's going to give it that flavor that's so tropical Jamaican it's just going to be amazing just going to have to trust me on this one this soup tastes phenomenal then what you can do is i'm going to add my dumplings but if you don't have vegetable broth i mean traditionally in jamaica for the, traditionally in jamaica we use maggi noodle maggi soups i like this vegan version of it this one is called not chicken bouillon and it just enhances the flavor without the animal ingredients so check this out I'll leave a link below and you can add this or you can just add salt but I like the oomph of the extra flavor that it brings to my soups so I'm gonna add one cube and it'll just be right and next I'm going to add my dumplings so like I said, I'm going to do, um, let me just bump up the eat. I'm just going to do this. My husband likes these spinners. <laughs> Call them spinners. So I'm adding some spinners to my soup. <laughs> and sometimes I do different shapes. <laughs> sometimes I just do different shapes. So that's it. And basically the soup is... Finish. I'm gonna let it cook for about 20 minutes so all the flavors can come together and basically that's it easy peasy and yummy so that's it so see you in a minute when the soup is finished I'll be back
Our soup is ready and it is amazing. It smells so good in here. And I'm going to serve it and so you can get to see it, what it's like, and all those nice dumplings and potato. And look at that. And the soup is just perfect. Oh, look at that. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let me just turn the stove off. Look at that. Nice texture. Rich soup with a lot of gungo peas or pigeon peas. Just nice with little potato, dumplings, carrots. And I'm going to do a taste test. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's very good mm. very flavorful just love it it's so good oh another childhood favorite recipe of mine take me back to Jamaica so good mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you want to try this recipe and when you do I'd love to hear your feedback also Remember to subscribe to our channel and hit on the notification bell so that you can be updated on all our latest recipes. And I'll see you on the next video.